guides. Today we're going to go into the museum at Puffingdon. So this is built as a Victorian Railways gang shed. It actually is an original shed from Kilmore. Plus an extra bit tacked on later on. And here we've got various bits of equipment. Little flat top trolleys, pump trolley. That one's exciting downhill. And two Casey's, which were essentially Victorian Railways copies of Fairmont's because we stole everything. And we've got a couple of clay trucks from a brick mine. Brick quarry. Fairly rare wooden bodied narrow gauge truck. And of course little toot which doesn't look like anything else at all, honest. And as we head down here, bins obviously. Heading into the little passenger station that will one day be able to cool people around. One of our NQRs, and down there, got the beast that I usually use on track patrol, but it's not available in summer, MVW-1. This will eventually be able to carry passengers around the museum, in time. It's in the main museum building itself now, this is the Malcolm Moore rail tractor. It's sitting on the two foot track, so the museum's dual gauged. Hey. Not the Massey Harris tractor. I think it belongs to Dave. Tackle rail tractor. This thing's a bit of a beast to drive. It's basically a Fordson tractor and gearbox connected up with a rail driving system. Little Coal Creek rail tug. Probably would have been a lot more at home working in an airport pulling around planes or luggage. This is a little gasworks locomotive which was rebuilt into a Western look 861 John Reese. Standard way of making up a sawn timber rail truck. And of course, Climax 1694. This one's fully operational and does take days out on the railway from time to time. It's quite a unique drive. Side mounted cylinders. Driving a central shaft. That in turn, you can just see under there, driving through gearboxes, open gears actually, the uh, individual trucks. And its top speed is roughly eight mile an hour. Climax indeed. This one is the sub Nigel that we kind of hope one day might become Thomas instead of using the uh, other little one. The SAR narrow gauge Garrett. This is two of the ones we have on the railway, or number two, I should say. Number one actually runs and is used. This one, not so much. Over here we've got the Alishan Shay. So this comes from the Alishan Railway in Taiwan. When it arrived here it was thought to be operational, and probably was from different techniques and standards, but not to ours. So it needs to be rebuilt. There's another unique one with side pistons driving. They then drive shafts, which currently aren't here, that in turn drive the gears on the wheels. Top speed, about the same as the other one, eight mile an hour. This one is Puffing Billy's Garrett G42. Biggest loco on the railway, currently in storage here in the museum. But operational. Sitting down here is the Q truck, which is a broad gauge truck used for transferring narrow gauge rolling stock and locomotives to and from Victorian Railways Newport workshops for repairs and restorations. And currently sitting on top of it is an NH van. So this little beast is a modern electric vehicle. Well, maybe not modern, but it's an electric vehicle. So, you know, these concepts aren't really new. Over here, we're in the boiler house, which is the home of the George and George boiler. Currently, it's all quiet. 
not running today. The left hand blue thing is a little lizard pump. Amazingly effective at pushing water into the boiler. And over here we have a weir pump, which is far too effective at pushing water into the boiler and uh, makes it a bit cold. Most of the time though, water's pushed in by an injector, the same as it is on a steam locomotive. Of the operational engines, and I'll pop in some video from another day when they were running, this is the Tangi vertical engine. This is the Tangi horizontal engine. Another small horizontal engine that was found in the bush in Ichuka. This is a hot air or Stirling engine. Another one of the weir type pumps, very similar to the one hooked up to the boiler. And another lizard pump. Very again, very similar to the little one hooked up to the boiler. These can move an amazing amount of water. In fact, they're quite capable of making this area very wet. So there you have it, a bit of a quick tour of the Puffing Billy Museum. Well worth a visit, it's really nicely laid out and maintained these days. So I certainly encourage you to come along and uh, have a check it out. If you ride the train, it's free to enter here, it's part of your ticket.